we qu let's quickly discuss programming languages. Uh, you developed, uh, you co-developed uh, Ample and Oc, uh, pro a mathematical programming language and a scripting language called Oc. What were the goals of these two languages? The goals of Oc were basically to make it really easy to write very simple programs, the kind of program where in your heart you know it ought to be just a line or two of code. Mm -hmm. if, the, if the language supported it, you could express what you wanted to do in just a few lines of code. Uh, code. <clears throat> there was an example a few days ago that I was uh, talking to a student here. He was going through a list of basically volcanic eruptions and the job mm -hmm. was, you know, the data was a date, the name like Krakatoa and the magnitude of the eruption and his job was to find all of the volcanic eruptions which had magnitude greater than six mm -hmm. or something like that. And that's a perfectly fine example of the sort of thing that Auk was meant to solve because that's a one-line program. In fact, it's a four-character program. <laughs> so you just say the third field is greater than six, and you're done. So Auk was meant for that kind of very simple-minded data <clears throat> selection and rearrangement, transformation, summarization, uh, the kind mm -hmm. of thing that might have been done by report generation. So it's been around for a long time. We first started working on that in 1977. And it continues to be widely used. I support one version of it, although uh, not the most widely ver used version mm -hmm. of it. Um, and it's a, considered a core Unix tool. And I think in terms of scripting languages, it probably provides the most bang for the buck. It does not scale to, <laughs> it definitely does not scale to uh, big programs. But for programs that are really only a few lines long, it's hard to beat. Very cool. Oh, and Ample. Yeah. Ample is a totally different thing. It was done, um, I should say, was done with Al Aho and Peter Weinberger. We were all at Bell Labs at mm -hmm. the time, in fact, in three adjacent offices. Uh, Ample was done with Bob Forer and David Gay, who were both at Bell Labs at the time. Um, and Bob was a professor of, of management science, very interested in optimization problems, and so was Dave. And I was interested in the language design issues. So Ample is a language for specifying optimization problems like linear programming, mm -hmm. quadratic programming, integer programming, all of the different kinds of problem that have the word programming as part of their name. Um, in spite of that, it's not strictly a programming language in that sense. It's a declarative language, but it is a very, very convenient way for describing the sets and the parameters and the variables and the constraints that make up an optimization problem. And then with that specification plus data that describes a particular problem instance, mm -hmm. you can feed that into any of dozens of solvers like Cplex or OSL or Minos and those uh, do the optimization and give you back numbers. So it's in effect a uh, high level language for describing optimization problems where different solvers are the computing engines. Wow, very interesting. What do you think of uh, the modern kind of web, so-called web programming languages like Ruby and, and, Py and Python? I In think, particular. yeah, let's call them scripting languages, yeah, roughly I mean, speaking. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a bunch of scripting languages that I think all have something to offer. Perl is perhaps the earliest of this group. And mm -hmm. Perl was a wonderful language for doing system administration tasks, which is kind of where it started. And then it got a second life when the web, web came along. Mm -hmm. um, Python is another language. Python is probably the one that I use most at this point. It's the one that I'm teaching in the course most often mm -hmm. this spring. Um, I have never really used Ruby <clears throat> other than for the most trivial applications, but I would think that it's just exactly as useful and <clears throat> excuse me, in the same general class. Very, very useful language for uh, writing many kinds of programs. Basically, scripting languages like Perl and Python and Ruby, and I would include PHP, and mm -hmm. the, the list could go on. Um, they're very useful for tasks that require manipulating text primarily. They provide uh, notational conveniences like regular expressions, which make it very, very easy to specify patterns of text for finding them, searching them, or manipulating. They usually provide some basic data structure like an associative array or a hash table or a dictionary, which mm -hmm. is very convenient. That's all that Auk provides. Um, <clears throat> and they tend to be typeless, or essentially typeless. And so you don't have to say very much um, that the types and operations and so on on uh, variables are just inferred by the context in which they're found. And so all of those means that these languages are very effective for writing small programs, short, simple programs to do manipulations that may be standalone themselves or they may be glue 
that holds together other larger computations. Right. I think they scale up to some extent, but not hugely. I would be deeply suspicious of a Perl or Python program that was more than you know, five or 10 pages long, let's say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the, the frameworks like uh, Django and Flask and uh, they kind of, uh, I think PeachCherry, I think this minimalist Python framework, we're getting some traction people right. are using. Right, yeah, and in fact frameworks uh, like those, in particular mm -hmm. Django, which is the one that I'm most familiar with, mm -hmm. uh, are I think very, very convenient because they're using a nice language and then the task that you're doing is so stereotyped, so organized because it's built a web client and mm -hmm. server that they can generate a lot of code for you and provide a nice organizing mechan or structure for the program that's going to be written. Right. So, uh, and for that, I think because they're so well organized, the size can be noticeably bigger. But I, w I don't think that, let's say, Google is gonna run their infrastructure as a Python program. Yeah. Well, I mean, 